You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for eScouted. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest scouted news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues, it's After Buzz TV for Ease Scouted. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the very exciting premiere of Ease Scouted, a new model show out, finally out, for us model fans out there, and um, of course, it's been constantly compared with America's Next Top Model being the other reigning champion model show that I also host. And uh, so we're going to break it down totally. Initial thoughts, it's a totally different show. I love them both, and I'm loving what Scouted brings to the table. By the way, I'm Jackie Moran, a former Project Runway model and model in New York City for many years, so I have plenty to compare to for this show scouted and I just as a former model let me just say right off the bat that I am loving it because it's such a great portrayal of so many things that happen in the industry and I can't wait to hear what my co-hosts think and they are holding it down in LA for me while I call (laughs) in from New York. Welcome Kendra uh, Cabasel, a reporter and journalist is uh, joining me to the left if you're watching on Ustream. Hey Kendra. Hey. Sorry. And to the right, Gabby <laughs> Loren, I believe I, am yes, I saying that correct? Yes, you got it. <laughs> okay, another uh, journalist, host, all that good stuff, right? You're in the entertainment industry. So yes, you know I am. Stuff. I do all of it, and I work at E! Entertainment in production during the weekday. That's where I just came from, actually. I just ran in the room. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Gabby, so you are an insider because I am this an is, insider. of course, on no other network but the fabulous E. Yes. So, oh my God, well, there you go, exclusive insider info. We're going to get it out of you, Gabby, and uh, so excited to chat about it. And because this is a model show, uh, DJ Jesse Janity, I'm a little upset you did not intro us with some hot model beats. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't know if this was that type of a model show what do you mean oh, that okay. type <laughs> first like, of all america's next time model is like boom boom it, you just get that beat so i don't i gotta i gotta watch it first and i gotta feel what type of music i'm gonna bring to scout it okay we'll okay see. all right kendra and gab though wouldn't you love some hot model beats i mean come on i would and i love right, dance so, in general yeah, so I'm, 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 I, I might just have to hit you up with something after the break then <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> great <laughs> Well, I I opened the show, ladies, by saying that it was, when this show was announced, it was immediately compared with America's Next Top Model. And being the host of that after show here on AfterBuzz TV, being a former model, the first thing I have to say is there is no comparison. These shows are two entirely different shows other than the fact that they're based on the premise of the modeling industry, which is a very all-consuming statement right there, there's really nothing alike about them, and that's what I love about Scouted. For everything I love about America's Next Top Model, there's different things to love about Scouted. So some initial thoughts, uh, starting, let's start with Kendra. What did you think, just initially, of the idea of this show and sort of starting at the development process? with these with discovering these new talents and and mo- potential models um well initially i think um the idea was something that it sparked my interest i think i briefly told you and gabby uh the reasons for that um <laughs> i think there's always you know when someone has interest in something it's because you have a personal connection to it and 
it's something you know I didn't really mention to anyone until I told you guys about today um, that I was actually scouted as a, a teenage girl in New York back in the day. <laughs> I won't give my age. So you okay. were in New York when you were scouted? Yeah. And wow. it, it's funny because I, I must have repressed it because, <laughs> you know, when the show came out, I, I remembered it and I was talking to my mom about it. Um, and it kind of, it was just like, you know, a, a drop in the bucket of life. But um, it was, you know, it was an experience that I remember. Um, I was there, my parents were divorced, so that's why I was in New York visiting mm -hmm. my mom. And um, this woman came up to me and said, you know, oh, you have such a cute face. I, I remember, you know, the words she said. I'm not trying to say it in a vain way. I'm just No, we totally story. get it. Don't worry about <laughs> and, it. And, you know, and I was a teenage, you know, a young teen. Um, and she gave me her card, spoke to my mom, and we ended up going to check it out. Um, and, you know, needless to say, I didn't take that route. <laughs> I'm not, you know, a model today, but... It was something that, um, it was, you know, it was a compliment, and I think at the time I was excited about it, but there, watching the show, I can see that there's definitely a line drawn where um, you have to have that passion, you have to live, breathe, sleep, everything, you know, model world, and I think that's what was interesting for me, to see, you know, what happens after that step. Right, and right. do you really know when, like, how do you know, at what age do you know that this is something you want to do? Maybe, Jackie, you could answer that since that's something you chose to do. Well, the, the interesting thing about this process, and we saw it with Jillian, who's the first story, um, you know, each show, just to give a little run of show, each show is going to feature two girls uh, that either – get, you know, by the end we see if they get signed or they don't after being scouted. But it's all about this scouting process, which just by your story, Kendra, shows us that this really is how it happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially for girls, you know, being in New York, I'm surprised that you said you were in New York when you got scouted because when you're in New York, it's right here. It's in front of your face. But right. when you're in Nebraska or, you know, uh, Arkansas or somewhere – you they can't just walk into a New York agency. So that's where these scouters really come into play is for the girls all across the country. Mm -hmm. um, but what I thought was interesting, you said at what age do you know, Gabby? Like this first girl, Jillian, she was 15. And so it leads me to this question that the CFDA keeps raising the, the fact that 15-year-old models walk down the runways and stuff. What do you guys think of a 15-year-old being scouted? Um, not her choice, but it wasn't her choice to walk into a modeling agency. She got pulled off the street. Just It raised a question for me. Do you ladies think that that's a little bit young to be sort of plucked out of your high school life? You know, we saw her mother. I'm kind of just jumping right into Jillian here. But we saw her mother sort of has, have reservations about it. What do you think, Abby? I mean, I definitely think it's young, but I do think that if it's something you want to do and you know at that age you want to do it and you're not being forced, then it's something you should go for. And I think that the people that are working with you in that industry should maybe provide you with the services to, I don't know, speak to somebody if you feel like you're being under too much pressure or, the, you know, just the daily pressures of what a model has to undergo and what you may see being in that industry at that age just so that it doesn't scar you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes down, whether it's the entertainment industry, the modeling industry, the acting, you know, everything. Uh, yeah. So it's important to have a, a good support group, and I think if you're – a mature 15-year-old like Jillian, she seems very mature, and I could totally vouch for her on that just by her life experience, then I think it's okay as long as you're surrounded by people that support you. I don't know, Kendra, what do you think? I mean, I think it's a tough one because I think it's a case-by-case -case basis, and you said it, Gabby, It's these are hard industries, and what I will say that that happens after this little lovely little cloud of being scouted and getting excited and going for a pedicure to celebrate is the reality of the modeling industry. And unfortunately, people don't necessarily hold your hand through it. And so mm -hmm. I just have seen it live. I've seen it happen with so many girls where you don't get the proper guidance. And right. there's just too many girls that want to be in the industry. There's just no way to really properly foster these girls. 
But, you know, this is kind of like the honeymoon period, the scouting period, where <laughs> it's, as Jillian said, it can only go up from here. Um, you know, so what I like about it is that they're kind of capturing it at that Cinderella story moment where if it's ever a Cinderella story, it's this little transformation in the beginning called development where, you know, if you are going to blossom, it's here. And uh, what happens after that? Well, then that's what uh, America's Next Top Model is for. But um, (laughs) I do like that they're zeroing in on this beginning process of the modeling industry. But Kendra, I wanted to get your thoughts on on the age range, like Jillian being 15. What do you think about that? Um, I agree with you that I think it's a case by case situation. I think it depends on the individual girl. Um, as we saw, Jillian has a head on her shoulders. Her parents are very involved in her life. I think, um, you know, it's kind of similar to Tyra Bank. She had her mother there the whole way, and I think she's still grounded today. Um, and then you had um, Jennifer, and I think she had the same passion, but I think she may have had um, a little bit of the, you know, fantasy of modeling in her mind um, versus the, you know, the actual. Um, drive to kind of do what it takes to get to the top Uh, and then you know I'm not taking away from her I think that's just what the scouts were kind of looking at at each girl oh my gosh Jennifer and her momager I (laughs) can't even wait (laughs) to get into that exactly um but let's stick with Jillian for a second because I started bringing her up as I'm so excited to talk about her because Jillian I don't know if this was by happenstance or they planned it this way, but Jillian is like the perfect example of that Cinderella story because I know for a fact that she already has shot Abercrombie and Fitch since this aired um, from a source I saw online. So let's talk about the good story first, which is Jillian. (laughs) And, you know, uh, Gabby, you said you can relate to her. What I loved is they turned it into a human interest story. Mm -hmm. I do have to call it out that in the reality of the modeling industry, I don't know if this human interest story would have come up, but they chose to do it on the show, and I love it, love them mm-hmm. for that. Um, they brought up her dad, who seemed to be her hugest supporter, and mm-hmm. the way he talked about his cancer and how every day is a gift now, and you have to go for it, and he was so supportive. It just made me want to cry the whole time. I just love this. I loved watching him, you know, be such a supportive dad, and she seems like such a cute, nice girl uh, that you want her to someone like her to do well. Um, but Gabby, I know you said you could relate to her. Uh, why is that? Um, well, basically, when I saw this episode, I found a lot of things in common between me and Jillian. Um, she is she's a strong girl, and the fact that her father has been sick since I think she said fourth grade. She right? Was four, Did she I mention? Think. I think she was four years was it? old. Oh, okay, it might yeah. have been. I don't know. But when she, since she's, you know, very young, and to deal with having a sick parent that you never know if something is going to happen to them, they may pass away. It's very hard and hard to comprehend at that age. And I think it kind of forces you to grow up. And for me, I had a father that was ill, and he passed away when I was fourteen, and I, it was. A time in my life where it made me, you know, some people could either take the experience for the better or for the worse, but it really helped me to grow as a person and become such a strong woman and I just have a maturity and a courage and a motivation that not many kids have and I could see it in her. I can see that her parents give it to her and because of what she's exposed to she's a strong girl and I think she's going to be really successful at what she does because of it well just the fact that you shared that story with us I mean that's what's so great about bringing out a story like this on a show is look at how you can relate to her I mean first of all you're such an amazing girl just by hearing that story I did not know that (laughs) thank Um, you but (laughs) You're welcome, but um, that's what I think was so great about hearing this story. You know, she's really young, but you're right. It just shows through that she's a strong girl, and that's why it is a case-by-case basis because I do think she she seems like a little bit smarter and tougher than somebody else who might be her age, you know. That's why it gets so tough to decipher, like, what's a good age, what's not. You know, it's really that, like, this is a girl who maybe is ready, and – 
you know, maybe she starts modeling in the summers right now, but, um, you know, to hear her story and to see her just sort of the love she has with her dad and her dad supporting her. Oh my God. I just, mm-hmm. I just love that about her. It just makes you want her to succeed. Uh, Kendra, what did you think? Um, I definitely was drawn to Jillian when, you know, the first moment we were introduced to her and I think that's part of her it factor and what the scouts saw in her. And I think it's more than just her look. I think she has some depth to her. And I, I think that's, um, you know, a, a testament to what her family has instilled in her. So, yeah, I definitely um, was drawn to her as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, she, you can see it, like I said before, that this girl has it all. And I think they, besides the fact that she was great in her test shoot and she did so well, you can see it in her personality, the way she treats her parents. Mm-hmm. You can also tell the, ty- the type of parents that she has, mm-hmm. you know, they lead a good example for her. And I just think that she, regardless of the support system in the modeling industry, I think her family is a very strong support system for her. So she'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you on that, uh, Gabby. And, you know, what I... I do think she's too young, but at the same time... (laughs) It came out finally. said that, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But the thing is, is... She, I think she has the potential, and so, you know, she has been through enough to be able to sort of start, and I think the good solution, which we saw, is that she starts sort of with the summers and stuff, but mm-hmm. let's not deny when she stepped on that stage after hair and makeup on that photo shoot, oh, my God, she could have been 25. Yeah. Like a Calvin Klein model, Cal- whatever. She just like was amazing the second she hit that camera. And you know they say we heard them say this: you either have it in front of the camera or you don't. Mm-hmm. She totally had it. What did you guys think of her once she did like hair and makeup? And I thought she looked amazing. I thought she was amazing before hair and right. makeup. <laughs> I fell in love with her when the in the first five minutes of the yeah, show. Yeah. She is great, and she has such a natural beauty to her. Her face, her eyes are beautiful, and her smile, she lights up a room. Mm-hmm. You can totally tell, and those types of people do great in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. She has a presence, and then obviously with all the makeup, she was able to transform into something else, and that's what they were talking about in the show, the versatility, and mm-hmm. she has that. Yeah, she was stunning yeah. when she she came out of hair and makeup, but she again, yeah, she was stunning before that. So right, she literally lights lights up a room. Yeah, she does. Yeah, I'm really happy for her. I really, I really hope she does well. And of course, Scott Lips at One Management, who, by the way, that he truly, they truly are one of the top agencies. I mean, this is not for TV. They are it when it comes to modeling, like maybe with a handful of five other agencies, you are it if you sign with one. So for him, Scott Lips, to to tell her, like, and sign her, that is, like, seriously the Cinderella story coming to to life. I mean, you can't get any better. Um, There are a lot of in-between steps here with the – with the Michael Flutie, the scouting agency, and then there's also the Model Scout in Texas, uh, Paige Parks. There are a lot of in-betweeners here. But I think what's good about having the the girls all come to this scouting agency, um, which normally you kind of come and it's all one one thing, um, but I think for viewers it it just makes it cleaner and easier to sort of see the process this way. But normally what the scouting agency is doing, you kind of run all over the city and do these things at different photographers in different places. But um, I I like it for TV that it's all kind of in one place and we have – Danny Stahl, who's the image consultant, and uh, Barry, who's the model mentor, and Julia, who I think is going to be a big character. Um, I kind of like all these all these players here. Um, but what I can agree with is, but it's so such a sad truth in the industry, how Michael was saying she needs to shed her baby weight, and she's too, you know, I don't think he called her fat, but just that she was hard to fit. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Doesn't that does that make anyone else sad? I mean, it's true though. The sad thing is, is he's it's the truth. That's what they would say. Yeah. But that makes me sad. 
Yeah. It's it's unfortunate that it's it's an industry like that. And I noticed in the shots, I mean, I hate to say this, but it, it's what I saw just in the pilot um, during that first episode when he mentioned that they showed her in the photo shoot and she was wearing a tank top and you could see some of her midriff. And I just hate how they portray it like that. But yeah. I mean, she is a she is a tiny girl. I mean, I mean, you can always tone up. It's great to tone up. And I guess he said it in the nicest way he could have said it because he could have said, don't eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I, I agree. It's sad. I also hate the whole height restriction thing because I'm a shorty and I wish I could do bigger things. Unfortunately, I can only do commercial product type stuff. But mm-hmm. I wish that there was another, you know, outlet for people and it didn't have to be all one way in this industry, you know. Yeah, Kendra, what do you think? I it's funny cuz I must have forgotten that I was watching a modeling show because as I was watching it I was actually <laughs> shocked that those words came out of his mouth. I was, you know, I thought she was fine. I didn't think, you know, baby weight like I didn't even notice that. So, um, you know, it is sad that it's still kind of an issue. I don't know if you can t- uh, speak to that, but um especially in 2011 with the issues people have with Photoshop, etc., I would think that you know, it's a non-issue. I don't know. Well, being in the industry is a sad truth. And Gabby, you do, said you do some commercial work too, so you know this. Um, the sad truth is, is the the sample sizes. I mean, there's been plenty of requests to make these sample sizes bigger, but the you know there are sample sizes, and that's where fit comes into play because you only have zeros and twos. And it used to be fours and sixes. It's really like zero, two, four. So that's kind of where it comes into play. Um, but what I like about it is regardless of what they said, they ended up signing her. So yes. that makes me happy. That is um, a great point. But is it, a so, question, right. is it a question of sign here and then we're going to tell you what to do with your weight? or? Well, I mean, they're going well, to yeah. manage her. But at the well, same time, she won. Yeah, well, then taking it a step further, Gabby, you said, I like how they say didn't say don't eat. Well, I've heard that a thousand times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, but at least in the in the pilot before they signed her, they didn't say it. I'm that, just glad for that. That was on the cutting room Somebody's floor. Somebody's going to say it, yeah, though. I can guarantee that. Oh, I am sure. And if, said it. Exactly. And if right. it's not televised, they're saying it anyways, I'm sure. Right. Right. Well, but so regardless, let's be happy. They signed her <laughs> baby weight and all. Yay for Jillian because I think she's so sweet and cute. And, um, you know, not your typical, like there's definitely unique features about her. And that's, and that's why I love her um, and a great story. But they signed her over Jennifer, who had the 22-inch waist which when I heard that, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> that is like a very slim waist measurement. Yeah. Uh, the standard is 24, so just picture a 22. Mm-hmm. And she didn't even look uber thin to me when I was watching it. Um, but Jennifer, come on, <laughs> let's talk about Jennifer, or should we just go right to, is it Chanel, I believe, with her mother? <laughs> her mom um, um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> So poor Jennifer, Well, we know that she did not get signed, but let's talk about her journey. Uh, What were your initial thoughts of her and her mom, momager? Well, I will tell you that when I had first seen Jennifer on the show, I wasn't a fan because, first of all, 101 for me, I feel when I go into a job interview, a casting, regardless of what it is, Be prepared and be professional. The only reason why I was five minutes late today to AfterBuzz Studios (laughs) is because I'm coming from another job. I'm constantly running, so it's not like in L.A. I have an excuse there's traffic. But in general, like, I am always on time. When I was living in New York, because that's where I'm from, I would always be on time. Anywhere I had I mean, to be. Even if you rushed Prepared. in here late, you, yeah. have, you have your book. I have my notes. Like, <laughs> I came from work. I have everything going right. on right now. But, I mean, it's just the principle that you want to be professional and you want to be seen professional. And the carelessness just, like, boggles my mind, especially in Hollywood. It happens all the time. I see people at castings with no headshots. The paper's not – the resume is not stapled. And you know that the casting director wants that. I'm like, if I hear one more person say that they don't have their headshot – it's going to be the end of me, <laughs> you know? So I wasn't a fan oh my God. in the initial stages. 
Gabby, I'm so glad you called that out because I was so excited to get to the momager and the you know her breakdown, but that is <laughs> even more mind boggling. You're right. Like I wrote it in my notes as that's like walking in out the door naked to me. The first thing I ever learned, like somebody might as well have stamped it on my head, is cards, book, heels, and you know extras being lip gloss and a bathing suit in the bag at all times. But right. Your essentials, cards, book, pair of heels as a model. Like, if you don't have those things, you're naked. And, well, I guess people might like you naked, but you know what I mean. Like, it was, it's just <laughs> That's a different casting. <laughs> <laughs> Kendra, do you – I mean, I'm sure you agree. This is any industry. You have to be prepared. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, her mother was just saying that she's always professional and, you know, speaking for her daughter. And, yeah, that was a little disappointing um, because, you know, there's something about Jennifer that's unique. And I do, you know, I, I can appreciate her appearance. I, I love the gap um, in, in, in her teeth. Mm -hmm. And um, and so to have her kind of walking in there without her book, like, it just seemed a little sloppy. Um, so, yeah, I was disappointed in, in Jennifer. I'm sorry. Sorry, Jennifer. But I do have I to say, though, she was, I mean, she kind of won me over towards the end. I appreciated the fact that she came from a homeless family and she, you know, rise above it. And then also the fact that when she went into the, I mean, she, she totally did her job. She went to New York did what she had to do, and she took notes once her mother left the room. And you know what? I, I thought she did great after she oh, yeah. listened to what they wanted. In the beginning, well, not so much. But then you saw her natural, um, her naturalness come out. I, I think, yeah, I think it was it because better. her mom left the room. Yeah, it and, was. Yeah, and that was kind of, like they said, symbolic of, you know, their relationship and, and I guess how she felt at the time in terms of well yeah her mom is i i can't stand momagers i'm sorry <laughs> i hate it it's so like meddling let the kid do what they want to do but like be the parent not the manager yeah. and that's you know what, what i mean? think she came to realize towards yeah the she end. and yeah. yeah so props to her kudos yes. high five yeah because you know what the funny thing is about jennifer is the book thing threw me for such a loop but then she gave some really good answers and she was very kind and constantly saying, I'm thankful. Thank you for the criticism. I'm so happy to be here. You know, her homeless story, she gets, you know, she got emotional in the office. So she, it's weird because you wanted to not like her at first, but I think it was kind of the book thing through you. And then the mom just totally getting in the way. Mm -hmm. But once the mom got out of the way, if you really look at Jennifer, she was kind of likable towards the end, so it made you feel a little bit bad, but let's just call it like it is. Her mother yeah. totally cost her, uh, like <laughs> totally cost her in this whole thing. Yeah, and you know what, and I totally agree with where you're going with this because it's the momager that gets in the way, and you totally said it yourself. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the momager, she may or may not have been signed. It, she may or may not have been signed. Mm -hmm. It's up in the air, but... The I mean, I think I heard a story actually this year that Taylor Lautner, I think his mom or dad was their, his manager, and he was pissing off the PR because they were getting too involved, mm -hmm. and they quit on him, and it was one of the best PRs in Hollywood. And mm -hmm. it just goes to show, like, you need to step back when it's not your place. Yeah, Kendra, what do you think? <laughs> Well, I have to say, Jennifer, I wouldn't say she wasn't likable in the beginning, but I, I think there was kind of that pressure coming from her mother. And I think there's a way to be a momager and still kind of see your child thrive. Um, maybe they wouldn't use the term momager. Maybe it would just be mother. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, and I, I think we've seen it in Hollywood and, and certain momagers work and others don't. But I think the child also has to kind of draw a line. If if they had had a talk before she went in, uh, maybe it would have been a different outcome. You know, we're, we're going to be in this together, but can you stand to the side? You know, that sort of thing. Right. But it does it does change your opinion of her. Because I, I had bad feelings about her in the beginning, not only from the book, but because of her mom. Her mom left just an uneasiness with me. Yeah. Just her, her appearance, her persona, everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. And what's so funny is even before the photo shoot, trust me, guys, because I've seen this with the moms, 
standing in the agencies, like in front of the daughters, it is like the number one thing that man, uh, agents and, and management agencies hate. So you're like going in there with like a cement block on your back basically. And I have a feeling her fate was already sealed the second she named herself as manager of Jennifer mm-hmm. um, when they were sitting down with Michael Flutie because right. uh, you even heard him say, if she gets signed, Scott Lips is making all the decisions. And trust me, that conversation, I bet you right then and there her fate was sealed, which is so sad because what did happen is she did thrive the second the mother walked out the door, and that was her moment. She broke through, and it's almost like too little, too late kind of thing Um, because the mom was just such a turnoff, I'm sure. Right, and you know, you're joining, um, sorry, Kendra, you're joining a management. It's called One Management. (laughs) They will be managing you, not mom management. (laughs) Right. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting that they actually, you know, did that contrast of um, choosing Jillian versus Jennifer as the, you know, the top two, because Jillian's family was, you know, they were there, they were present, but then, her father even said, you know, you're independent, you're strong. He know, you know, he believed in her, but I think they gave her that space. kind of that space to That's yeah. That's why I like her. Come. That's why she's my favorite, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. So my favorite and I think the funniest thing, can I just call it out guys? Did you <laughs> notice how her mom, Jennifer's mom, at when they were getting pedicures, she was like <laughs> you know, I may have to leave you here. I can't hold your hand. You're right. Jennifer yes. was probably like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> you could see it in her eyes. She was like, oh, my goodness. When are you going to go? Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, so, well, so we know how it goes. Jennifer, unfortunately, you know, Scott Lips, when he told her he wasn't signing her, if I could tell you how many times I heard that, um, before I, I got signed to an agency, he really is right. I mean, it kind of sounds like a like a, a concession speech or whatever, like oh, keep trying. But the truth of the matter is, if Jennifer really wants it, she will keep trying. Just because one agency says no, uh, the agency I ended up working with had said no to me in the past. So, you know, it's a good lesson in what Scott said. It is true. You just kind of keep going. Just because he said no doesn't mean everybody else is going to. Right. And you know, it's like finding a place for yourself. So. You can't feel too bad for her at this point. I'm sure she can still find someone out there. She does have a lot of, you know, good qualities about her. So but if I'm you, just so happy for Jillian. If you notice at the ending credits, um, they mentioned that Jennifer is no longer working with the scout. So yeah, yeah. I wonder if modeling is in her future. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's weird because they did say that, and you think she has this drive, but maybe it's the mom, maybe it's, you know, like the momentary lapses with the book, but you can't have too min- too much room for error in this industry, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she doesn't seem like she's doing too much right now, but if she wants it, she'll, she'll go for it. But uh, to sort of sum up this premiere episode, which I totally love, totally love the premise and uh, watching these two stories play out is I'm just so happy for Jillian <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to see who we have uh, who we have next week but what did, what did you guys overall any last uh, thoughts on on this premiere episode I actually wonder because I never dealt with scouts really and I just wonder what they get out of the process what are they getting out of the process Oh, oh, I could tell you, ten percent, twenty percent. So no, are they getting twenty percent of your contract with the management or agency that you're signing with? Is that what that entails? Yeah. See, here's the thing that what girls watching this show might not know is there's positives and negatives to being scouted by like these mother agencies. That's what they call them, mother agencies, like the uh, Kristen in San Francisco or Paige Parks in Texas. Not only do you have to give something to this mother agency, but if it was set up, there's this extra middleman of Michael Flutie and the scouting office, that's another percentage. Normally there's even just the one percentage of the mother agency. This is like double, double. So I wonder what happens to these girls if they do get signed like a Jillian. Um, And then there's, the one management percentage. So you are losing quite a bit. 
to all of these scouts. So that's something to keep in mind if you can go directly to the agencies, just for any aspiring models out there. Um, the less middlemen, the better. But for TV's sake, of course, it's, uh, it's great to watch all of these scouts sort of mold these girls, but not so great once you start seeing the, the paychecks and, and the percentages go out. So the scout gets a percentage of each job you book, or they just get a percentage of the contract you sign? Well, typically models, when they sign with an agency, they don't get numer like a numeric Yeah, so they're for not, signing. okay, so they're not signing for an amount pretty much. Right. It's just like signing for representation. Unless you're a huge model. I know I have heard that some, you know, each case may be different when you reach a, a higher level, but initial models, it's just like a representation agreement mm -hmm. and you just get paid per job. You lose the percentages per job. Right. So it's, it's oh, so that tough. scout is with you for life then, <laughs> or at least for the time um, being. <laughs> for the length of the contracts, usually, yes. So that they got contracts you. are usually okay. like one to two years. And, um, you know, so it's definitely something girls have to think about. Like if you're stuck in the middle of Alabama and you have no choice and there's a Paige Parks by you, you know, obviously you can see she does have a record. But you are taking a risk and you are mm -hmm. already signing away some of your income. So it's just something to think about as far as weighing all your options, you know? And do they normally, do the scouts fly you out or does the management fly you out or is that entirely on your own expense? Well, that was an interesting thing to see because it looked like they all got put up in these nice hotels and, yes. uh, you know, got the treatment, <laughs> which is probably what's nice about uh, doing it through the TV show. Yes. Um, and the same goes for... America's Next Top Model, but in the reality of it, all of it comes out of your paycheck. If you stay in a model's apartment, it comes out of a paycheck. Um, you just have to think about all these things that come out of your paycheck. It ends up being a lot, that's for sure. That's why it's so hard for models to get past the square one, because you rack up so many expenses in the reality of the industry, unfortunately. I don't mean to put a damper on it, but that is the, uh, the, that is the reality. No, this is actually really educational for anybody <laughs> out there, wherever you are, whether it's this country or outside of the country, <laughs> and you're interested in modeling. It's good information. Mm -hmm. It is. Absolutely, and that's why we're here, <laughs> the uh, scouted host. <laughs> For After Buzz, we're here to bring even more to the show. So, um, <laughs> you know, we're going to be here week to week, and I love having you ladies with me. And I have some great news and gossip, and, of course, we have to make some predictions. So okay. let's take a quick commercial, and we'll be right back, hopefully, with some beats. Yes, Jesse. Hi. I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And, like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag co-workers about it at the water cooler. Then, I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzzTV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? I love this song. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the runway? <laughs> yeah, this is so like Vogue. This is like this Vogue. Is Oh this my is God, what you guys Jessie, wanted. You wanted some, some runway music, I figure. Uh, that's right. Now, I don't know if you're dancing in the studio, but oh, yes, there you go. <laughs> Work it, girls. Oh, you can see us, right? <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I love it. All right, well, I'll be there next week to dance it up with you guys. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, really? You're going to be in L.A.? Yes, I'll be here. Now. I'll be live next, next week, everyone, in the studio. So oh, I can't well, wait exciting. to see you live. That'll be good. And um, Kristen will be with us next week. Oh, yeah. Yes. 
We'll have a ton MRA. of fun. Yeah. And more questions to be answered. So anybody who's interested in Scouted, interested in modeling, we have all the answers. So you better call us week to week, 424-256-1729. We want to hear you. And um, let's get into some news and gossip because with fashion comes cattiness, of course. So uh, on that note, um, <laughs> let's get into it. All right, so I'm going to let you uh, do your news over some hot model beats, Miss Moran. Thank you, Jesse. I love to know I have some pull around here. <laughs> <laughs> so get this, guys. Um, Scouted is already getting so much buzz. They got amazing reviews from the New York Post and the New York Times, but they're also with lovers come haters, and surprisingly, one kind of hater is Anya Rubik, which who's a huge supermodel, and she spoke out, literally brought the claws out on Twitter, um, saying that she thinks the scouted advertisement, if you see it up there with the red dress, um, if you're watching on Ustream, she thinks that it was a direct, and in her words, shameless copy of her highly successful and uber glam advert for Ellie Saab's fragrance, Le Parfum, which debuted in May earlier this year. It featured her posing on a busy street in a billowing gown. Yes, it looks exactly like that. Um, and it basically she's saying it was very accurately replicated. And here's my thing on this. Okay, so they may have based it on that or used it as some inspiration, but don't you think, do you think she should be flattered or, you know, kind of annoyed by this? I think, I think she should be flattered because there are huge, she, it's not like it's going to hurt her advertisement or anything. And if somebody models themselves after you, I don't know. I, I don't know if I agree with her on this. What do you guys think? I, I'd have to see. I don't think I know which ad it is. Jesse, do we have it? No, it's right. It's up here. Oh, oh, you mean the original it, ad? Yeah, the original ad. Oh, I saw the original ad, actually. I looked it up earlier, and I, up. I definitely think the original is 20 million times better than this. I hate to say it. This model doesn't look as um, seasoned, I guess I would say, as as she is. The other ad right. spoke out more to me, and I don't... I mean, yes, I think there was inspiration and a little bit of copying, but I don't think it does any harm. It's not like it's overshadowing the other one or something. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I should have, uh, maybe we'll get that out to you uh, so you can see it, but you can clearly, when you come across it, she's basically, the only difference is she's in a beige dress, but I think you called it out perfectly, Gabby, is that if yours is better and you're a huge supermodel, what do you care? I mean, I'm surprised that she would take to Twitter. Oh, Kendra, did you pull it up on your iPad? I did. Just on, hold, on hold the, it straight up. On the AfterBuzz iPad. No, can no, you, hold it to this camera. See can that? You, can you guys see it? I love how con how <laughs> instantaneous we are here at AfterBuzz. <laughs> we are on so, it. <laughs> okay, I want to say something, girls, though. Uh -oh. Go ahead, Jesse. In fashion, the knowing the designing part of it, modeling part of it. I mean, we could say that uh, what is it Vogue this uh, month with Lady Gaga copied this picture. I mean, she has the big right. red flowing dress that looks similar. Yeah, she has a hat on it. And even with designers, they take something that has already been done and add three dots on it and call it their own. <laughs> it's fashion and it's already been done probably before this was done. When right. was, do you know when this ad is from? What, what year this ad is from? It was, it was, I believe, just last May, they said, so. Wow, so it was actually pretty recent. I don't think I, I would have copied, if I was the graphic designers on this, I would not have copied something that recent. Yeah. I don't think that's cool. It does look cool, pretty similar. But, <laughs> yeah, it's very similar. The dress and everything, the yeah. entire thing, the look, yeah. where she is, the buildings in the back. I mean, but, but I what? wouldn't be jealous. I would, yes, I would think it's flattering if I was her, and I wouldn't like reach out to Twitter to send out hate mail. Yeah. These are just upcoming models that want to be somebody. It's yeah, not that think, serious. Yeah, it's more of a, I agree, it's more of a compliment than, you know, a dig or a, you right. know, I, I think it's Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I think it's, it's different if somebody like uses it to like, uses it in the wrong way or something, but everybody at at this stage with so much going on so many players in the industry it just happens and i think it like
Jesse said, it's it's like Lady Gaga imitating somebody. It's flattery to me. So I'm not I'm not so cool with her taking to Twitter on this, but um, you know, every, to each their own. I don't know. I guess it, it rubbed her the wrong way, but uh, it'll get her. I some also press. wanted to. Sh- oh, go ahead. Sorry, no. I was saying it'll get her some press, and that's probably. Yeah, I was thinking maybe that was her motive. Her motive. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and and that's smart because here we are talking about it. Exactly. <laughs> if she had said, "Oh, that's nice," nobody would have, you know. <laughs> Right, right. So, So see, she's smarter than we all thought. (laughs) Supermodels are smart, smarter than we all think. Um, But I also just wanted to share a couple of pieces of some great interviews with Michael Flutie and Danny Stahl, who are going to be two mainstays on Scouted. And I think it's great to get to know them because they're who the they're the people we're going to see week to week. The models will change, but they remain the same. And just to give everyone an idea, Michael Flutie has written many books. He has worked for the in, in the industry for nearly three decades and definitely has that sense when it comes to finding the it factor in girls. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about what went into making this show and because um, I just thought it was so interesting. Um, according to a recent interview, he said that he has worked on this show for four years. Um, it's a typical Cinderella story, um, but he had to pound the pavement pitching it to so many people, and everyone said he couldn't do it. He waited two years, pitched the pilot again, and finally got the green light. He basically went on to say that he really stuck to it. He said, I wanted it to be real and organic, and now that the premiere is finally here, I kind of can't believe it. I just wanted to share that because it's almost like representative of what the girls have to do in the industry. It's kind of like cute to hear that he had to try so hard to even make this show happen, Mm -hmm. and uh, I really love it. And so I just wanted to share that um, with everyone, and I think it makes me like him even more. It is a tough road, let me tell you, and I'm in production, and I've pitched ideas before, let me tell you, it is not easy, and either people steal your ideas, or they don't believe in them, or they believe in them, but they just don't give you a chance. So props to him for sticking with it. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all about timing. And, you know, Gabby, I meant to ask you, you're, since you work at E!, what's the buzz going around about, about Scouted? Actually, I have to say that I heard about this pilot so uh, like m- months ago, and... My cousin actually was the first person that brought it up to me. She's actually, she owns her own agency. Um, Nothing like too crazy, nothing big, but they do well. And um, she was like, do you know anything about this? And um, I wouldn't say there's too much buzz right now. I I have friends that work on special segments for it. um, And I work in international. So right now I don't have any news on that side for you, but I might in the coming weeks. So we'll see. Okay, good to know. (laughs) Well, I definitely, you know, I know you'll share any scoop you can with us, and it's good to have an insider. And uh, what agency is it that your cousin works at? Um, It's called City Model and Talent, and it's in New York but not in the city. It's in Long Island. So for okay, I feel like it sounds familiar because I actually am from New York, and I grew up in Long Island, so – I have to look into it. Really? And then so you you might know the the agency I'm signed with, too, because the agency I'm with is in New York as well. Oh, wait. Which agency is that? Or you don't want to say? No, it's fine. (laughs) I'll say it on the air. MMG. Oh, my God. Do you know them? Uh, See that? We have so much in common. (laughs) (laughs) I know them for sure. That's awesome. So very cool. Very cool. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, agencies and and back to – this sort of insider agency gossip. I also wanted to share um, Michael's opinion since he is an expert and we probably have many aspiring models listening. Um, He was asked to define the term supermodel and I just wanted to share his answer because I thought it was a good one. He basically said supermodel is someone who has used modeling to create mass level awareness while at the same time maintaining, maintaining the accolades and respect of the industry. Women like Giselle, Kate Moss, Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista, Janice Dickinson, Naomi Campbell come to mind. A supermodel can work with iconic photographers, brands, and magazines, and at the same time have the duality of having the masses know who they are. It's a combination of art and commerce with the portfolio to support that status. 
I think that's just something to remember as you're we see it so much on top model that girls just sort of forget who they you know where they are and their place in the industry and I think basically what he's saying is even these supermodels kind of always remember what the industry and working is about you know and not having sort of that diva attitude so I just I like that I liked hearing that from him because the supermodel has kind of lost its edge as far as that term goes over time, you know? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Definitely. <clears throat> Would we say that the Victoria's Secret supermodels have that divaness or are they pretty normal and nice, maybe? <laughs> if that's possible. Well, <laughs> I think, you know, the thing about supermodels of today, like the Victoria's Secret models even, I mean, can you really name their names and feel like you know their personalities like the same way that when Tyra and Heidi and all of them were the, were the supermodels? I don't know. I feel like what he's saying is there's kind of like that. He actually went on to say that there's been a lack of supermodels currently, and he predicts a resurgence in the coming two or three years. And I kind of get what he's saying there because this, there's not that many huge supermodels currently that are like of that Giselle um, Tyra Heidi status in my opinion well and I think that's part of today just because um, a lot of actresses kind of you know take over in that realm for magazine covers commercials we see a lot more actresses yeah and I think that was kind of a debate in the acting uh, the modeling world rather right yeah, definitely. And so I hope he's right. I hope there is a resurgence of like the true Cindy Crawford supermodel. Um, that's always been, I always chime in for that. So I'm totally with him on that. <laughs> but I do have to say, going back to what my question was, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know them personally, but I want to make a prediction that those mo- supermodels, Victoria's Secret models specifically, or even like, um, e- what what's her name? Irana Sh- Shake? Is that you, how you Ivana say her? She did sport, Sports Illustrated cover. Yes, yes. Well, um, like she is engaged to Cristiano Ronaldo from um, Spain on the soccer team. And a bunch of those models are married, have kids. Things like that. And I don't hear too much Hollywood gossip about them getting divorces. So I feel like they can't be too diva where they can't even keep husbands. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I so I totally get that. And I like, I actually, <laughs> I think models do have somewhat of a better work ethic sometimes because you really do get treated that way where you kind of have to. Um, have a good work ethic. So even if you're not really hearing about them, maybe that's a good thing, as you kind of said. <laughs> maybe it's good we're not hearing too much about them. Yeah, I mean, you have to – and you know what? Heidi Klum, Heidi Klum, she is gorgeous, and she has such a great personality, and she's been with Seal forever. You know, I just, I actually yeah. – there are a few supermodels right now that I could name that I think are pretty legitimate people. Although I don't know them, I'm just going to say from my observation. If keeping a husband yeah. is the well, game. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you have your option <laughs> <today. about> Heidi. <laughs> no, I know. Anyway, <laughs> that's another story. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, before we go, I just wanted to share, because we, if we have style advice and all that good stuff, we're going to share it. And Danny Saul, who is the image consultant on Scouted, did share uh, some of her best style advice that she has ever received. So I wanted to pass it along. Um, She basically said, fashion is about confidence. You will look best if you feel your best. Oh, and never forget that fashion is fun. Fashion is fun, she repeated. (laughs) So that's some style advice for everyone out there. And uh, I don't know what you guys think of that, but I'll take it. I like her. Do you like Danny? (laughs) Yes, I do. I do. I actually wanted to also mention Paige Parks. I, I, I thought we should commend her. I think, uh, you know, the we were saying the modeling industry kind of gets a bad rap sometimes, but um, I like how she handled Jillian and, and, and her family and actually, you know, showed some empathy with her father being yeah. ill and, and almost not taking her on because of the father's illness. So that was... She was very awesome. understanding. Yeah. I liked her. Yeah. 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 That's sometimes what is good about mother agencies is <laughs> literally the word mother is because sometimes they do give you that little bit more guidance. You will lose more money, but 
it might be worth it if that's what you need because if you have a smaller agency that kind of seems more intimate like pages they they can pay a little bit more attention to you and and really develop you if if they're good people and so she is an example of someone who I think is a good mother agent and she seems to actually be one of the best out there. So mm-hmm. if you're with her, that's definitely a good thing. I think. Yeah. Wow. Like Jillian, she won in every way possible. Yeah. Look at I her. know. <laughs> Jillian. <laughs> to get her to call in. She, yeah, we should get her to call in. That's, that's right. We'll idea. tweet her. Um, and definitely I think she deserved it though. She seems like a great girl. So, so happy. And that is all of our news and gossip this week. So let's get into some predictions. (laughs) Love that music. (laughs) Okay, well, it seems like there's, I mean, they didn't exactly show us who will be in it next week, but there will be two girls per week getting scouted, getting developed, and uh, seeing if they get signed or not. But it does seem like we will see some celebrity models, let's call them, like Bar Raffaele and Salida Ebanks, and uh, seems like there will be some drama emerging. And uh, I guess I wanted to get your predictions on who you think will be the drama queen out of the out of the scouting staff, and uh, who's your favorite celebrity that you're looking forward to seeing, hmm. or supermodel. Um. Well, supermodel, I don't know. I mean, I don't think they named all of the ones that will show up, did they? Or it, but who would you like to see? I but I, I'm i I'm a fan of Leah Kabide, and I'd like to oh, see Oh, yes, her. she's gorgeous. Yeah, and I just, and she has that same inner, you know, that beautiful spirit that kind of shines through, just like Jillian. So I think she'd be a good one to have on. Um, and other than that, I'm just kind of still watching the uh, the scouts and the, casting directors um and so i don't i don't know how to read them yet but i i'm i'm liking Paige so far um yeah. i would say, yeah, what do you think i would say that um well i know this is so like cliche but i'd really like to see heidi klum just because i think she's so awesome and motivating and i feel like she'd be like that good like mother mentor figure to the models also, I'd like to see, like, an Adriana Lima or something, because I feel like we never really, I mean, we hear from her, but she's so, like, in the shadows with her, I feel like, personality, I don't know. I yeah. feel like, you know, she doesn't, they don't really do too much press, and mm-hmm. I'd like to see more of who they are and how they can guide these young models. So that would be nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um And random prediction, but I could totally see this series going into something completely different in future seasons where it's now not scouted anymore but maybe it's just within the agency or watching these models now that they're yeah basically they're growing or they've grown Mm -hmm. now we're going to see the real deal like spinoffs from the yeah spinoffs i could totally totally say it see that too yeah that definitely seems like a possibility and i think what might happen is you're going to want to see like a Jillian or whoever comes up in the next episodes, you're going to want to see what, what's going on with them. So that's a good call. Actually, uh, you should get a, you should get a percentage of that, Gabby. <laughs> um, but I think that's a great prediction and I'm looking forward to, if, um, I actually know her um, and I know she's, worked with one management. I love Iman. I think she, I just saw her recently in, oh, at the Lucky Iman Shopping too. event. Iman too. Recently. <laughs> Here in LA. Back in the day in New York. So funny. Yeah. So <laughs> I think she's amazing. And I, and I hope to, uh, I, I think they mentioned her if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to have to get the scoop on that, but maybe we can get, uh, get some words from Iman on this show. You never know. So uh, certainly, excited to see it all play out and uh gabby i like that idea maybe we're already calling for for a (laughs) spinoff here and um just looking forward to having special guests from the show hopefully on our show and my amazing co-hosts i definitely want everyone to know where we can find you guys um gabby and kendra do you have facebook twitter or uh twitter names and websites that you want to share all of the above i was going to say the (laughs) same exact thing (laughs) Uh, you want to go ahead first? Sure. So <laughs> you guys can find me on facebook.com slash Gabrielle. 
G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E, Loren, L-O-R-E-N, like Sophia Loren, the number one. <laughs> and my Twitter account is Gabrielle underscore Loren. And I can Great. be... Great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Kendra. <laughs> um, I can be found. Uh, my website is www.kendracabasel.com. It's K-E-N-D-R-A-K-A-B-A-S-E-L-E.com. And my Twitter handle is Kendra Cabasel. Same spelling. Great. Well, we'll definitely be tweeting this show. We want you guys to tweet at us. I'm Jackie Morana on Twitter. And uh, definitely call in. Tweet us with your thoughts week to week. We'll bring you some special guests and some inside scoop on the modeling world. So we'll see you next week for Scouted. Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs> From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, buzz you later. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.